Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend, and a happy Friday, y'all. Did you watch the Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina documentary on Lifetime? We're gonna talk about it. Gorilla Glue Girl has been set free. And there's a 63 year old woman that got scammed thinking she was dating Bruno Mars. I know. We're gonna talk about that and a lot more. You know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage, let go. So we've made it to the end of another week. How was your week and how's your Friday going? My week was productive yet great. And you know what, it's Friday and it's a long weekend. You guys know it's President's Day weekend, right? So, you know, we only observe the new presidents, but it's President's Day weekend. I know you're like, beauty bestie, where are you? I'm not at home, I'm not in Miami. In fact, I'm on the couch in my hotel room in Atlanta. So I said, you know what, it's a long weekend. I wanna escape out of Miami, so let me go pop on up to Atlanta, see some of my good old Judys, have a good old Kiki, and between you and I, I am gonna see some of my favorite people at my favorite medical spa here in Atlanta called Aya. So I'm gonna blog about it as well, but I'm gonna get some skin treatments. <laughs> Ow. And oh, by the way, I know, don't judge me. It's a paper cup. There's no mugs in my room. I had to drink literally my tea out of a paper cup. But it does not mean that the tea still ain't hot and it's gonna be juicy, so let's get started. So in the latest episode of Stupidity, in case you guys have not been following it, there is a man by the name of Len Martin that has followed in the footsteps of Tessica Brown, and we're gonna talk about her too, you know, AKA Gorilla Glue Girl. This man said he did not believe that Tessica was really going through what she was going through. So he decided to try it out on his own. Do you not know that this man took Gorilla Glue? Uh-huh, another Gorilla Glue moment. This man took Gorilla Glue and glued a paper cup to his upper lip. Okay, so at this point, I really feel like people are doing these stupid acts for clout and for the notoriety of it all. So let's talk about it. He said to prove that Tessica, what, ooh, ooh, I'm almost out. You know, I love this serum. It's the Advanced Night Repair by Estee Lauder. This man said that to prove Tessica was being overdramatic, he thought he could put Gorilla Glue on his upper lip and that he would be able to lick it off before it would dry. The fact that you thought that you could put Gorilla Glue on your upper lip and then lick it off, that's called poisoning yourself, sir. You do not ingest glue. This is not Elmer's. This is not daycare. This is not the little glue. Y'all know we all did it. When you put the Elmer's glue in your hand and you peeled it off and you had a like, little spider thingy thingy. It's not water-based soluble glue, sir. So what made you think that Gorilla Glue could be licked off? And if it could be licked off, why would you wanna ingest glue in the first place? So this fool, back to the original story, said that he thought he could lick it off. And apparently because he couldn't lick it off, I guess something else told him, well, let me stick a paper cup to my lips so I'm not walking around here with a glue mustache. So he stuck a paper cup to his lips. Obviously it's Gorilla Glue and in the warning label, it says, do not put on skin. This explicitly says this where Tessica thought it was misleading because it didn't say here. The warning says, do not put on skin. And this man has put Gorilla Glue on his skin, put a paper cup on his lip. And do you now know what happened? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. He now had to go to the doctor to have the doctor peel off the top layer of his lip skin in order to get the, the paper cup off his lip. Serves you right, sir, for thinking Gorilla Glue was something to be played with. Y'all gonna get enough of playing with Gorilla Glue? These people told you it's called Gorilla for a reason. It's strong, honey, it's mighty, and it's not meant to be played with. So now the doctors are telling him if the lip does not heal within three weeks, he may have to get his upper lip surgically removed. So now you're about to walk around here looking like one of the people with a physical disorder, like the people with the cleft lips, which is a real thing. So you now are choosing to inflict violence on yourself. I can't. I don't know what people are, there has to be other ways for y'all to make money except 
causing bodily injury and bodily harm to yourself. Because let me tell you something, honey. Gorilla Glue is not the way. Like, I'm not thinking about putting Gorilla Glue on any part of this brown melanin black boy magic in order for me to have to get it physically removed and to have something happen to my body because I want clout and or some type of attention or fame. I don't know who hurt y'all as a child, but baby, y'all, the attention that y'all are seeking, this is not the way to get it. So, moving on, Miss Tessica Brown, Gorilla Glue girl herself, has finally been set free, give us free. She's been set free from her bondage. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyway, so Tessica went to LA and Dr. Obangs, who is a black plastic surgeon, okay, Dr. Obang, we see you, has set her free and has successfully been able to cut and get all the glue out of her hair. Girl, you better think Dr. Obang, and he did it for free. Remember I told y'all this this procedure was about $12,500 and he did it for the free. Not only did he do it for the free, he said that he used medical grade uh, glue remover, aloe vera, baby oil, and olive oil. Baby, I got all that in my house. She didn't think she can, she didn't go to the grocery store and get her some aloe vera. She didn't have baby oil in the house to keep the lead shiny. She didn't have olive oil to cook with. Like the only thing she was missing was the medical grade glue remover. And I'm sure she could have got that from amazon.com, but baby, she has been set free. Hopefully she'll take that $16,000 plus GoFundMe account that she got going on and get her some RuPaul Drag Race wigs until her hair grows back. I am, t I am so grateful that this saga is over and that we can move on from her Gorilla Glue moment. Now, she obviously started this whole stupidity campaign in common sense, right? Or the lack thereof. But let me tell you about the latest thing too. Grab your tea. Did y'all hear about the woman who permed her pubic hair and fell asleep? Uh-huh. This woman went on social media. I'm telling you, I there has to be better ways in order to get notoriety, but we're gonna talk about it. This woman said that she permed her pube hair and fell asleep and she said she woke up and her stuff was on. This girl is on fire. She said her stuff was on fire. She said she was rinsing it out and her skin was going down the drain and baby, she had to go to the hospital. So much so that now she is wearing a whole adult depends, a whole adult diaper. Now, I, I have a couple questions. First question is, who's letting these grown adults walk around outside unsupervised? Because apparently people now need adult supervision and not like regular adult supervision. I, people need now like elder supervision. Like we need our ancestors to now start supervising us because there is no way that we should be hearing about these stupid antics by whole grown adults that has whole grown lives. And do you not know, she went back on Instagram and was like, oh, people are saying that I make this up and that this wasn't real. She goes, I do stupid stuff all the time. First of all, sis, don't be bragging about doing stupid stuff. Second of all, she's talking about, oh, I perm my pubes all the time. Is that a thing? Who is sticking some Madam CJ Walker perm in their pube area in the private, the JJ, the, 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 the sacred space? Who was doing that? Like, that doesn't even, I get nervous nearing down there. Let alone, I'm not sticking nobody's perm in my special area. She says, I do this all the time, but this is like the first time I've fallen asleep. So th my other thing is, so now you're making your guardian angels and your ancestors and your spirit guides and God and Jesus and everybody else and whoever you believe work overtime. You know, they say God protects babies and fools. But at some point, sis, if you're walking around here bragging about doing stupid stuff, your guardian angel is going to clock out, take a, a, an extended coffee break, and you're going to wind up unprotected by the blood and wind up dead somewhere because you've done stupid stuff. Y'all better quit playing around with God, Jesus, and everybody else that's supposed to be here to protect you and quit testing your guardian angels. So now she's stuck in an adult diaper. Who knows for how long? Let's see if IG certifies and verifies her because now she's diaper booty and I hope she does not start. Do not donate to this GoFundMe account because at this point, this 2020, was the year of the pandemic. 2021 must be the year of the lack of common sense. 
I'm not donating to anybody's GoFundMe account because at this point, it's just stupidity and I got better things to do with my coins. So I can't tell y'all what to do with y'all coins. I don't know if this woman has a GoFundMe account, but the way that this thing seems to work is you start off with doing something stupid, then you go to Instagram, the Instagram verifies you, and then you start a GoFundMe account and then you end up with coins. I'm not doing it. Moving on. Oh, I look real dry. Let me tell you something. Leaving Miami, I always, my skin always goes through the change. And they don't even have a humidifier here at this hotel. Can you believe that? So ghetto. So ghetto. Anyways. Baby. So did you guys watch the Whitney Houston, Bobby Christina um, Lifetime special? I could, you know, I had to because it was Whitney. Now, at this point, I don't need another documentary at all. Because at... When I first saw that it was Whitney Houston, I was like, mm, it's Lifetime, I could pass on this. I've seen the movie, I've seen the documentary, I've seen so many things about Whitney. At this point, I'm like, there's only so many times you could tell a story. I feel like I know the story about Whitney. Now, I will still see this movie when it comes out, but I'm just saying, in terms of documentary, I felt like I was good. But then they said Bobby Christina, and I was like, oh, y'all pulling me back in. So I watched it last Saturday, and if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. And I feel some kind of way about it. And I wanted to kind of like debrief this with you all. First of all, the people that they had, that they chose to speak in this documentary, if I had to rate them, it's a solid D for me in terms of D-list celebrities. And not even D-list celebrities like Kathy Griffin type of D-list. It's like D minus. You're still feeling the class. And these people, I'm just like, where do y'all pull these people from? You had Sherelle. Sherelle from Saturday Love, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. You had Sherelle as one of the people that was Whitney Houston's friend to speak. I have never heard in the history of all the documentaries I've seen that Whitney was friends with Sherelle like that. They may have been acquaintances, but Sherelle out here sounded like they were beauty besties and best friends and every beauty besties. That they were best friends for life. I mean, Sherelle. Then you have Pebbles. Isn't Pebbles already looked at as being sketchy in this industry anyways? And now we got Pebbles, who also I caught in the credits was a producer of this as well. Okay. Then you have Goddaughters. And there was this one child. Oh, my God. I can't remember her name right now. She had on all white. Make makeup was fierce. Hair was cute. But I have never in my life heard someone start a sentence with, my godmother, my godmother, my godmother. Girl, we got it after the third sentence that started with my godmother, that Whitney Houston was your godmother. But you don't have to start everything with, my godmother always did this. You know, my godmother never wore that. My godmother loved every... Like, girl, we know you're talking about Whitney. Hello, it says Whitney Houston and Bobby Christina documentary. Like, obviously, Bobby Chris wasn't your godmother. It was the weirdest thing. And Laura, forgive me, but when she started crying those crocodile tears, I could not help but laugh. But okay, so back to the, the cast of fools. Sherelle, Pebbles, two goddaughters, Tina Brown. Where do they continue to unearth Tina Brown from? And Tina Brown obviously is Bobby Brown's sister. Tina Brown also is the is the sister that we used to do drugs with Whitney and Bobby and then went on to doing drugs with just Whitney, who also sold the photos to the National Enquirer of Whitney's bathroom with all the drug paraphernalia. So that should already tell you, like, she's in it for the coin and she's no nobody's loyal except to the mighty dollar. Then you have Bobby Brown's other sister, Carolyn Brown, make a pop-up appearance. Then you have, and I'm assuming this is, Gary's son, she had the, they had the nephew speak. When have we ever seen the nephew speak? Then we had um, Nick Gordon's younger brother speak, who by the way is a little bit of a looker. Okay, younger brother. Then you had Becky Sue Ann, who was Bobby Chris best friend from the sixth grade. This cast of people, I was like, Lord Jesus, Lifetime's budget is looking a little slim, which does not surprise me because if y'all have not caught Lifetime thing, anytime something about black people on Lifetime has to happen, it always feels low budget. Look at the R. Kelly thing, right? Anyways, so they're telling these stories, obviously the drugs, and I just had issues because we know for a fact that Whitney and Bobby did drugs together, Bobby Brown. I felt like they painted Bobby Brown out to be a little bit of a saint, 
and they literally hung the majority of the drug usage and the deviant behavior onto Whitney. Y'all not gonna do my nippy like that. And, and I say that because there was a, I think that Tina said something along the lines of, Whitney Houston was a lie. Whitney Houston was the public persona and what the people wanted in terms of pop princess. Nippy was the real person that was from the hood, that was, you know, uh, the, the round the way girl from New Jersey, the person that showed up on that interview with Wendy Williams that day. That was the nippy that existed. Duality, totally get it. Understand it, I believe it. But what you're not about to do is literally make it seem like Whitney was the end all and be all and the deviant dysfunctional part of the Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston marriage. That was the first thing for me. Second of all, they also painted Nick Gordon to be some kind of stray cat that Whitney took in and that started to influence Whitney and Bobby Chris. Can I believe that? Yes, but I'm still not shifting all the blame to Nick Gordon because he's dead. And on top of that, I feel like some of this burden lies on Pat Houston, who has been quiet as a church mouse. Lord, I got, I got to do my brows. Who has been quiet as a church mouse through all of this. Now, you know, if it's not coming from the Whitney Houston estate, that Pat Houston controls. She don't know me talk about stuff, but I'm just telling you, I always had my eye on Pat, but they painted Nick Gordon to being the son. Uh, he moved in with them and that they basically started to say that Nick used to do the drug runs for Whitney. And obviously Bobby Chris used to watch that behavior. Not, ne not saying necessarily that Bobby, was, Bobby Chris was doing drugs back then, who knows, but Nick used to get drugs for Nick. And so not only was that going on, and Bobby, Chris, and Nick started this little love affair, um, this little boyfriend, girlfriend, even though he was so much older than Bobby, Chris, and that also they were saying that, you know, they felt like Nick was taking advantage. He would have Whitney Houston's credit card. He would go and buy things, things like that. Now let's fast forward. Because, you know, the night that the music stopped, the night that Whitney died, I completely believe that that was a whole set. Whitney used to swim successfully, right? You used to love to swim and she fell asleep and, and died in the bathtub. Well, they're saying that that day, I guess, apparently, um, Nick also was fishing and getting drugs because Whitney was back on drugs, allegedly, by the way. But after Whitney passed, Bobby Chris started going down the drug path, doing drugs and things like that, and that Nick was supplying her as well. In addition, what I did not know is they were never legally married, but apparently, according to the court docs, Nick Gordon was beating the crap out of baby girl. And so they were saying that the night that, the day that Bobby Chris died, she, Nick literally had a fight with her, beat her up, dragged her upstairs, locked her in the room. She took a bath, put her, her headphones in, and she f passed out, fell asleep in the bathtub. But they're saying that she had drugs in her system. Now, what I will say about this, you're not going to tell me that this is so much a coincidence that literally Bobby Chris dies three years after Whitney in the same way. The same exact way tells me that there was some form of foul play and somebody else had their hand involved in the passing of Whitney Houston. I'm not calling nobody's Pat Houston's name or Nick Gordon, allegedly. But I'm just saying that the story is tragic. The story is sad. And the fact that she was in this abusive relationship it's just bad. But what I really also think contributed to uh, Bobby Chris not being able to heal properly is the fact that, did y'all realize that the Houston had that reality show? Um, and the show happened three months after Whitney died. Again, a Pat Houston move, allegedly. But she wasn't, that, that young girl was not done grieving her mother's death. And y'all stuck a camera in her face and followed her and the rest of the family. Of course, of course, that contributed to the unraveling of her, her, of her self-destructive behavior. So I think there are a lot of hands into play with the death of Whitney and the death of Bobby Chris. I thought it was a very interesting uh, documentary told by some D-list people. But it's somewhere in all of that mess, there's a lot of truth there. So if you have not seen the documentary, I think you should see it because it's, it's at least worth the two hours. Get your popcorn, get your wine. Let's move on. Little Uzi, we talked about him, you know, the young man to put a $24 million diamond in his forehead. Yes, apparently it's still there. And I guess he got the bleeding to stop. Did an interview with Fat Joe and he said that he could not do the $24 million diamond in a ring because it would just be stupid. 
yeah, putting a diamond in a ring is an absolute stupid idea. And I guess it's stupid for him because he says, I wake up in a lot of different and weird places. I didn't want to run the risk of losing the diamond. So where are you waking up? Under the bridge with Billy Goat Gruff? In the dungeon? In a, in a cage? Like, in, in a cove? Like, what kind of places you ended up, sir, that you can't, you, that you call them weird places? And not to mention, how much safer is a diamond in your forehead than having a ring on your finger? Because guess what? Yes, you could take this off and lose it, but somebody also can knock your block off, rip this out of your head, and you now hanging out on the side of 95 somewhere, and now you're dead because you had a diamond stuck in the middle of your forehead. So I don't know, but I just said I needed to, t I needed to bring that to y'all because to hear him say that putting it in a ring was stupid, I was like, the middle of the forehead is smarter? Moving on. So last but not least, did y'all hear about this woman who got scammed out of $100,000, 63-year-old woman, who recently joined Instagram, got scammed by somebody probably, you know, in Africa, those same people that send you those emails talking about I'm in dire need and I need help. Yeah, those people. She says she got scammed, child, because she thought she was dating Bruno Mars. She signed up for Instagram. She was new to Instagram. And apparently she thought she was having a, a DM love affair with Bruno Mars, the singer himself. And she got scammed out of $100,000. So, okay, so first of all, sis, if it didn't have a blue check mark, it wasn't Bruno. And on top of that, Bruno doesn't need $100,000 from you. And the fact that your 63-year-old self thought you was having a whole love affair with Bruno Mars, not that age matters in this case, and it, it could not happen. But the fact that this was all happening through Instagram and you didn't think something was suspicious says something. So now this woman has been scammed of $100,000. She is crying for help. And I just need, I, I'm just saying, I hope. My prayer for 2021 is that God grants us serenity, peace, Black Lives Matter, and common sense. Because apparently, 2021 is running in the red, honey, in terms of common sense. <sighs> Can you believe that story? Mm, I can't. I can't because people are just that interesting these days. All right, guys. I got to go. I hope you have a great weekend. It's a long weekend for President's Day and it's Valentine's Day weekend. So if you're spending it with a loved one, enjoy. If you're spending it by yourself, love on yourself. But guys, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like and leave me a comment and I'll see you on Monday. Who loves you? <laughs> I do. Bye.